The San Francisco 49ers used to be welcome in many NFL cities, not so much by the fans as by the other teams. You see, the 49ers lost a lot. For a quarter century, they were colorful and exciting, but they never won anything. Not until December the 20th, 1970. And on that day, they crushed the Oakland Raiders 38 to seven and won their first divisional title on the 25th anniversary of their being. The next week in the playoffs, they stunned the football world by beating the Minnesota Vikings in their weather on their field. Playing for the last time ever in ancient Kizar Stadium before moving to Candlestick Park, they lost the right to go to the Super Bowl by one touchdown at the hands of the Dallas Cowboys. Disappointing, but not traumatic, because 1970 was the 49ers' most important year ever. How does a team win four games one year and 11 the next? How does a team reject its heritage and reverse its course? How does a team become welcome no more? That all of San Francisco blushed in the hues of 49er fever is partially identifiable. A coach, a star, a leader, and an unknown. But the emerging pattern was a subtle one. Probably no one understands or can relate it better than their quarterback for the past 14 years, John Brody. 1970 really started like any other training camp. Everybody was enthusiastic and uh, optimistic and after a couple of weeks, we got into exhibition games, which we were all very antsy to do. And uh, in normal operation, we lost a couple. And I think right then, I think something really important happened. What really evolved was the fact that uh, Dick Nolan had placed in our hands uh, 40 guys who weren't going to buy losing. And I think we, we finally got together and had a little, a little real expose as to what this thing was all about. And I think Charlie Kruger and, and Rosie Taylor and Jimmy Johnson and Dave Wilcox and some of the older fellows sat there and uh, really discussed uh, what we were there to do and where, where our purpose lies. The first real plus move that I could see was that uh, Dick made Ed Beard the captain of the special teams. And from that day on, the special teams just seemed to solidify guys like Rosie Taylor, Bruce Taylor, who was Rookie of the Year, uh, Cedric Hardman, and all the young fellows really picked up with Ed. After that point, we had to start getting into the season. And uh, with Washington, I think we were given a real indication as to what was going to happen the rest of the year, special team-wise. Between the defense and the special teams, they put the ball in a position where we had very little yardage to travel to get it on the scoreboard. And from a quarterback standpoint, uh, it's pretty easy to see that that's where it's all at. From anybody's standpoint, the 49er offense is where it's at. The offensive line, Len Rohde, Forrest Blue, Woody Peoples, Randy Beisler, and Cass Banasak achieve a reality worthy of note. They protect Brody in such a manner that he's dropped only eight times all year, an all-time NFL record. Using this protection as a foundation, Brody engineers the league's most productive offense and is named Pro Football's Player of the Year. As a singer of some note once said, it was a very good year. To do anything as a team, you have to have all 40 guys going at once. And we'd played five exhibitions in one league game, and our offense really wasn't at the level of performance that the rest of the club was. And I'll tell you, it couldn't have been more timely uh, when we played Cleveland. They came to town with their whole team going and uh, scored 33 points. And we had to come up with a big game, and somehow we did. And I think it gave all of us the feeling that uh, no matter what the circumstances dictated, we were going to get the job done.
All of us are feeling pretty good right now, and we go to Atlanta, and things are going pretty much our way until about the middle of the fourth quarter, and the bottom falls out. We're making mistakes that uh, we hadn't been making, and we've got the game in our grasp, and uh, we let it get away. Even after that, Ken Willard and Doug Cunningham just took the ball and ran it right down to their 18 or 19 yard line. And uh, all indications pointed toward a pretty happy return home. Uh, however, <laughs> as football is, uh, that isn't the way it worked. We're at a real crossroads of our season now, and we got to play the Rams next week. And I think everybody individually kind of wondered what's going to happen. Our apprehension about the Rams was uh, uh, quickly erased. As irony has it, the first real big play of the ball game, uh, Bruce Gossett kicked a 43-yard field goal, and that was really to set the tempo for the entire game. Offensively, we didn't do a great deal, but we did come up with a few big plays, and we unveiled a, an outstanding running back in that ball game. And the one fortunate thing is that time did not run out before half. Uh, the most surprised group in the stadium were the people that were in the end zone with the red jerseys on. We made another play in that Gene Washington caught a beautiful 59-yard touchdown, which was his first real long one of the year of many to follow. Getting 20 points against the Rams is a very satisfying thing and particularly when your defense is playing the way they were on this given day. that our defense all year long, when we played the real good teams, came up with their best performances. players in five positions, the 49ers work from a standpoint of being a big play defense, giving in when it won't hurt, being tough when it will. Obviously, you can't make a steady diet of playing magician, but we did get to the point where when we really needed the ball most, we had the feeling that our defense was going to get it back for us. And as a matter of fact, our defense led the league in forcing turnovers. And if you look at the final standings, the top four teams in the league were all the top four teams in forcing turnovers. And it's a very indicative statistic. With the realization that they are who they think they are, the 49ers go undefeated four consecutive weeks. The next four games, I think, were uh, really to develop into something special. Every game was uh, won by a big play, such as uh, Jimmy Johnson, who really over 12 years has established himself as the outstanding defensive back in football. Everyone every week had a little something new to contribute. John Eisenbarger hadn't played a lot. He made a real big game against Denver, and uh, it helped us. <laughs> it won the ball game. We play Green Bay and the defense just completely put it to Green Bay and offensively we weren't able to move too well but the defense just kept coming up with real big plays. Uh, they grabbed three or four interceptions and uh, 
and it made the game awfully easy. game series, Bruce Taylor really emerged as a game breaker. It really added confidence to our whole offensive performance in that we knew if we could stay in a ball game, a big play such as Bruce was making was going to make the difference. When we played Houston, uh, Bruce Taylor made more yards in one game than our whole special teams had in a whole year. These plays make uh, all of our consistent performances an awful lot more meaningful. One of the more meaningful is 25-year-old Frank Nunley, the middle linebacker. His consistency helps linemate Dave Wilcox and cornerback Jim Johnson become all pros. All this consistency is winning a lot of games for San Francisco. Ken Willard gains over 1,000 yards in total offense and never runs more than 20 yards at a time. Willard is joined by Bob Windsor, number 89, and Gene Washington, and rallying from a 13-3 halftime deficit to score a smashing 37-16 victory. In this game, Brody becomes the fourth quarterback in history to complete 2,000 passes during a career. In Houston, Bruce Taylor's remarkable performance drives the 49ers to their seventh victory of the year. For the fourth consecutive week, the 49ers are able to overcome early sluggishness with big plays. Trailing 10-7 in the third quarter, the special teams block a punt out of the end zone for a safety. Brody's offense then churns through the Oilers for 23 points in the second half. He throws a 54-yard touchdown pass to Jimmy Thomas. Many now theorize the 49ers to be unstoppable. The theory is short-lived. It's only natural uh, when you're 7-1-1 one, and one, to be feeling like things are going your way, and uh, sometimes you really forget how you got there. And uh, any laughing we were going to do about how we'd gotten there, we were going to do real early because when we played <laughs> Detroit and L.A., uh, they really kicked it to us. still leaves the 49ers a full game ahead of Los Angeles. Another win over the Rams and they can virtually wrap up the title. They lose. Now the 49ers must win the three remaining games. By the time we got a chance to play Atlanta again, after our original catastrophe, uh, we knew exactly what position we were in and things didn't start out on too fine a note. However, somehow, we were able to rally our forces, and uh, we did come out with a 24-20 win. After feeling like we'd just escaped the gas chamber, we went to New Orleans, and it was only fitting that uh, our two big playmakers again went, went, to, went to work.
Bruce Taylor ran a 93-yard uh, field goal attempt back for a touchdown. And Gene Washington, with the year he'd had, uh, happened to have his best day when we needed it most. Gene Washington gains more yardage than any other receiver in pro football. 1,100 yards. He's a phenomenon, the resident miracle worker. He's also very good. Everybody knows that pro offenses run pass patterns, but what does vary a little bit is the way in which each specific team has their own personality and the way they run them. And we try to be fairly simple in what we do, and we have to have a, a complement of guys, uh, Dick Witcher, Bob Windsor, Ted Qualick, and Gene, who really do their own specific things. With Gene, he's the kind of guy that makes a whole offense work and that he'll take whatever you give him. He works all week to try and figure out what you're trying to do. And in any given situation when uh, we need a big play, he's generally in a position to give me some advice. When you see two people in isolated plays where it looks like nothing but a throw and a catch, as you see the coordination between all 11 people, making it look simple. And that's what you're talking about when you get a guy like Gene as far open as he gets. I'd say that uh, when he holds that ball up, every guy in that field, I think, feels like he's got one eleventh of that baby. By the time we played the Raiders, our pals from across the bay, it was a rare situation. We needed the win for a championship, and if ever you want things to go your way, you want them to go your way on this day. And that's just the way it worked out. Meeting for the first time in regular season competition, the 49ers humiliate Oakland under a barrage of turnovers. Early in the game, Jimmy Johnson turns one interception into a touchdown. The entire defense comes alive, and no matter what Oakland does, the 49ers keep pulling the ball out of everywhere. The last pass of the game is symbolically intercepted by number 25, Rosie Taylor, voted by his teammates as the year's most inspirational player. With nine turnovers to play with, the 49ers inflict Oakland's worst defeat in seven years. The 49ers are Western Division champions. Oakland has been dealt with successfully. But down the road, the Vikings are waiting. You know, for our first playoff game ever, we knew how tough Minnesota was. and. Uh, we knew we were playing them in their backyard and the, the conditions weren't too ideal, but we were just happy to be there. And early in the game, the Viking defense was glad to have them. They score a touchdown following a fumble and the Viking scenario for victory is on cue. The play of the Vikings defense was to be expected. 
the play of Dick Nolan's was not. Nolan, not a thing. Now, the other thing is this, Frank. He's one of the old Packers. Yeah, I know. Just one time. I got that. I know. So when he steps over, they just step step up step up in the window, okay? Slamming the door shut on the Vikings causes them to start fumbling. Mel Phillips recovered one, Stan Hindman another. Time was drawing nigh for a big play. With the defense keeping the pressure on, the special teams again provide one. With the whole club now loose in the nine degree weather, one big play deserves another. Dick Witcher's touchdown, the punt return, the defense, and San Francisco has Minnesota on the run. After breaking the ice, so to speak, Brody controls the game with a cool hand. The 49er offense is out muscling the Vikings. In the second quarter, Bruce Gossett puts San Francisco ahead, 10 to seven. The game long pressure backs the Vikings up against their own wall. With Tommy Hart and Nasty Hart in number 86, steaming in to prevent the Vikings from doing anything, the kicking game of both teams becomes the decisive factor. After a towering punt by Steve Spurrier, the defense holds again for Bruce Taylor's road show. Moving in close, the jubilant 49ers begin a premature celebration at the two. And all Brody has time to call for their most important play ever is a quarterback sneak. take it as a compliment not to be welcomed anymore in other National Football League cities, but it's a real pleasure to be welcomed at Candlestick.